thought we might just kind of run through a few of these things and then uh, we'll, we'll kind of just navigate through the, the world of customization as it exists in this build, which as you already noted, is, is just a subset of what we can expect to find in the, in the shipping game. So I think we'll just go down the list here. People yeah. are probably very eager, I assume. They've never seen this, by the way. I do like this eye animation. You let it sit and it just kind of cycles through some really cool um, sort of 3D assets. Yeah. Which, which is yeah, just, the, the cool, nice. The other cool thing is like you just pop into customization. You already know we're doing a, a lot more. And, you know, it's great to hear Sam and you notice some of the customization that's going on with bots um, and in your own hands with, well, uh, you know, with your uh, AR. Uh, that's all That's all in the game uh, for for people to play with. All right, well, let's start by going in the armor hall, and then yeah. we're just going to kind of quickly move through here, and then we'll, you know, we'll kind of bounce around like you and I discussed. So armor hall, pretty self-explanatory. This is where I'm going to customize my Spartan's armor, right? So yeah. um, right away, here we go. Um, now for this tech preview, because it's a subset, I'm going to have one armor core, and that's going to be my Mark Seven armor core. And, you know, Jerry, you and I have discussed this a little bit. Just there's been a lot of questions, I think, in the community since we first started talking about armor cores, right? And, and we've we've demonstrated this and sort of showed it off in our old overview video and some prior blogs. So how would you sort of best describe, like what is an armor core and sort of how should we think about that? Yeah, so this is one of our new our new systems. So Christopher Blum and uh, Jeremy have done a really great job here uh, creating this system. You know, one of the things when we stepped back in design, we wanted to, wanted to rethink how do we help make sure that our players uh, are really represented as characters. And when you take a look at Spartan armor, it's like strapping on an F-22. Or maybe you want a set of armor that is like an M1 Abrams tank, right? Each one of those vehicles is unique and has a unique character. Um, the other great thing about that, the, the, the thing we're trying to build is we're trying to make sure that the character of that armor really comes through. Uh, th there's really no better way to show this than, um, hey, Josh, you have uh, one of the pictures, one of the concept pictures? Yeah. Okay, so everyone saw at the end of that amazing multiplayer trailer, the, the samurai armor. When we talk about strapping on a piece of armor as a unique character, I think, I think our first fracture core, and that's, we call these fractures because they're, they're not part of the main canon. They're part of basically side universes uh, that, you can, that you can look at. You can look at how we're trying to develop the character, and our artists have done an amazing job of really trying to represent the breadth of what we want to look at maintaining the character uh, throughout the entire armor set, and more importantly, allowing that customization and you as a player saying, hey, look, when I strap on that, Sarmer, you know, that samurai uh, armor tank, I want to make sure that I can make it mine. And this is the breadth in which we can, we can really express but stay within the character. We don't want everyone to feel like they're just all one part of a single uh, a, a single vehicle, basically. And so then you can look at what 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 the artists have been able to think about, and you take a look at the attachments that you're seeing there. You're seeing swords. You're seeing, you know, a bandolier. You're seeing grenades. You're seeing different hip pieces. You're seeing daggers. You're seeing darts. You're seeing whole different expression of what a samurai could look at could look like um, and that's that's pretty critical for us to help at least in this first impression in our first moment for everyone at launch um, because remember at a live game perspective we are expecting everyone to provide feedback what works what doesn't work what do you want to see more and that's where the grant game will grow as we move forward yeah this is awesome back, by the Josh. way i'm super excited by the uh, your roy samurai in particular which which by the way we've also confirmed will be um, one of the first free pieces of content that players can earn in season one by just completing a, a free event, which is yeah, cool. absolutely. And and again, that that type of completion, where just playing the game and earning things, is still a part of not only our DNA, but again, from a free to play game, we want to make sure that we provide multiple avenues, not just the battle pass, but you have different ways, and we'll show that um, as as we go forward, different ways in which you can earn things. Yeah, right now I'm just kind of cycling through the weapon bench just to give, yeah. uh, you know, give our viewers a sense of what that looks like. So, you know, if I were to equip uh, weapon coatings, I could check them out here. Um, I'm just sort of scrolling through, giving people a chance to see some of the some of the weapons that they uh, we have in the game currently that they'll be able to check out. So I yeah, really love this, this feature. This is so sweet because every time you pick up a weapon, right, you take it off the weapon pad. It is your weapon and it'll be skinned the way you want it to. It, it, it'll it'll look the way you want it to. It is, it is just a sweet, sweet um, feeling. 
Let's quickly jump in the vehicle bay. I mean, one big quick caveat here is none of the experiences in this tech preview build will let you uh, drive vehicles this time around. But of course, vehicles are an integral part of our sandbox, huge part of the experience, especially with the return of Big Team Battle. Yeah. So we're going to get to that a little bit later this year. Um, but I'll just kind of give people a quick glimpse here um, of some of the updated models, some of these things we're seeing for the first time, I believe. Yeah, um, and again, for the what, what we're showing here from a customization perspective, you make this you. So you are you get to say, hey, look, no, when I drive my Warthog or when I get on my Razorback with my team, I'm the driver, I get into it first, it's gonna look the way that 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 I want it to look like. And so as you continue to play in, your, in the community, you're gonna have different looks from, from players and everyone will know, like, it is you in the driver's seat. All right, then I'm gonna jump down one more real quick here in the body and AI. Um, this one, you know, we, we obviously have a couple different body types I can choose, choose from. I'm really, I really love actually the the depth that we've been able to go to now for prosthetics, right? Yeah. Just an additional layer of customization and, frankly, inclusivity as well. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, the biggest thing is just about, you know, from a philosophy perspective for for player first is we want everyone to be able to represent themselves. Um, you know, my sister is actually does build prosthetics for a living, um, and this is very important. Is it's a part of your identity? Um, it's also, quite frankly some of it's really cool um, and again we're only showing a very small subset so don't get lost in that um, but the sheer fact that you can do your your entire body the way you want to from a prosthetic perspective and really make this your identity is really really critical for us so personal ai is another new addition to the game we introduced this uh, people heard uh, some personal ai in the mp trailer for example yeah. i know there's a lot of people out there that became instant fans of lumu for example um, and I think, you know, we'll talk more about this probably with Tom French in a bit, and we'll see it in action in some of our additional footage. But, you know, this is just a subset, right? So yeah. there's... and it's also just the beginning. Like, this is the, this is the biggest thing. We have so many things in which you can really express yourself, um, you know, the way you want to. And even your, your AI sidekick, it's yours to express. Like, it's yours to make yours. And I think it, the cool thing is that when you see, when you see Tom talk about it and you see the modes you're going to use it in, um, it really becomes a part of the personality that you bring to the field. Yeah, and you know, each, each AI here, for example, has their own unique voice, their own unique personality. Yep. It's, it's really fun. And then you can go one step further if you want to and actually yep. even, you know, a subset of colors as well. So yeah. personal AIs are one of my favorite additions to the game currently, yep. and I can't wait for, for players to experience more of that. Um, and then, you know, we have one more grayed out area here, and this is where I'd be able to do stuff like my service tag and emblem. And, you know, I think you've alluded to there's more coming There's than more what's coming. in this build, so we want yeah. people to stay tuned.